Hey there, welcome to the 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCBWay, link in the description obviously, and I'm holding an airless basketball because these things are so hot right now. So hot right now. You've probably recently seen the Wilson 3D printed basketball, price tag 2500 bucks. You've seen MKBHD take it out of a box and balance it. You've seen Unbox Therapy do the same thing. However, I got to see some technology before them because I had Dave from EOS on the live broadcast from Rapid TCT in 2023, and I got to hold and touch and bounce the Wilson airless 3D printed prototype basketball. The Wilson basketball has a very specific lattice structure and a very specific material was used in order to make it behave as much as possible like an NBA basketball. In fact, last year's All-Star game during the dunk contest, you actually saw the Wilson basketball be used. It was really cool. Once this was out in the open, of course, you knew the 3D printing community was going to model it six ways from Sunday, and you knew there were going to be a bunch of people 3D printing this new airless basketball that had a model available, and you know there are lots and lots and lots and lots of people printing it and bouncing it and showing it off, and it's really cool to see. I even did it. So this one was printed in Polymakers Polyflex on the Prusa XL in about 2.5 days. I was able to get the supports off fairly easily. I don't know if my material was as dry as it should have been because the underside is a bit stubbly, like this basketball needs a shave. And then though, I tried to bounce it and... Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. I took offense to that. No matter how hard I throw this or how high I drop this from, it just doesn't bounce. Ugh. Let's try another TPU, this time a generic TPU, something that's just labeled flexible on the spool, and let's get it printing on the Prusa XL. And here it is. This is a TPU printed on the Prusa XL in 2.5 days. It is generic white flexible. The bottom side here did print better than the Polymaker one, and I think it's because I dried this more so than I dried this filament here. This one, though, will it bounce more than the Polymaker one? Let's find out. Ready? Yes! Let's go. Three, two, one. It's the same, which means that no matter how hard I throw this at the ground, it's not gonna bounce back. You gotta be kidding me! Well, these are very similar in properties, so what if we tried PLA? PLA is a rigid material, PLA plus the Elegoo high-speed PLA, and I did it on the Magneto X. How about that? It's been an amazing machine to test, and I can't wait to show you more about the machine but it took, whoa, this moves. It took a little over a day and a half to print in PLA, and this is it. So just as an example, there's that. This is a 100% PLA airless basketball. And you might be wondering, PLA, that's a rigid material. It's brittle. Will it bounce? Let's find out. PLA, 3D printed, basketball, small bounce. Well, that's not bad. Larger bounce. Well, that was interesting. PLA itself, I know is a rigid material. Uh, it is not the most uh, flexible. It was bouncing pretty well until the force I imparted into it broke it. So there was too much power there. It wouldn't be right if we didn't drop the PLA basketball from up above, right? <gasps> you 
It actually bounced, and then it broke more. So, success. The science behind why these don't bounce much and this one bounced until it broke is actually fascinating, the material science behind this. And whenever I think of science, I of course think of Andrew from 3D Gloop. Andrew, what do you think? Hey Joel, I heard you wanted to talk about some science. Well, let's dive in. So we've got two 3D printed lattice balls using different materials. One bounces and the other, well, it just kind of thuds against the ground no matter how hard you throw it. What we're dealing with here is essentially a set of physics problems called collisions. And since we live in the real world, we're dealing with inelastic collisions or collisions where energy is lost to things like friction, heat, sound, and drag. Now, for simplicity's sake, let's imagine these two balls as identical in every way, except one is squishy and the other is rigid, one PLA and the other TPU. Both are free to fall from the same given height and impact the same hard surface, like concrete. At the start of the fall, each ball has the same potential energy stored in it. As each ball falls, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Once the ball impacts the surface, that kinetic energy is transformed, and our two balls behave very differently. But why? Well, each ball has a different coefficient of restitution. You can think of this as a measure of how efficiently the ball is at converting its kinetic energy back into potential energy and then re-releasing it after the collision. Or, more accurately, it's the ratio of relative velocity of separation after the collision to the relative velocity of approach before the collision. Andrew, dude, that's kind of a lot. Dude, dude. Let's break it down a little bit more. You see, as each ball is falling, right before it impacts the surface, it has converted all of its potential energy into kinetic energy. And during the collision, in an instant, all of that kinetic energy is now converted back into potential energy. So depending on how fast the ball was going, pretty much determines how violent this conversion is. This collision causes the ball to deform or change shape. After the collision, the ball starts to return to its original shape and bounce back in the opposite direction, thanks to Newton's third law. Ah, Newton's third law. That essentially states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Bender from Futurama demonstrated this wonderfully during an episode to stop spinning in outer space. If you found any of this interesting, there's a whole world of material science out there that explores how different materials and even different geometries can affect the outcome of a simple bouncing ball. Man, I am a, I'm a huge fan of learning and, and a huge thanks to Andrew from 3D Gloop for helping educate us. And I hope this isn't the last time he's able to do that. I am really happy that flexibles are, are easier to print, more so now than ever before. And I've always said, that material science is what's going to drive 3D printing to the next level. The airless basketball from Wilson, the $2,500 proof of concept is neat, but I also think that it's kicked off something extremely special. Meaning basketballs aren't the end. Perhaps other types of balls can be 3D printed or perhaps inner geometries can be introduced into other types of balls, or we can mix flexibles with rigid or semi-rigid materials to create balls that can be thrown harder or hit further or kicked faster. The future is fascinating. And honestly, do you wanna see this in a batting cage? Let me know. And just like that, we're at the end. I really love the idea of material science and I really hope you do as well because we're gonna be diving more into this as the weeks go on. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Flexible print, all the things. And as always, high five. Well, that was a good time, but Uncle Jesse, you're up next. Whoa, great pass.